Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for tuning in to another episode of the Generation of Wrestling Podcast. It's always is yours truly, the 28-year-old piece of gold of franchise, aka the show stopper, better known as the GOW's resident tribal chief. And with me as always, got my tag team partner, my brother, my family. He is the flies in the room, Mr. One. Two, three. Pin that ass down, K Breezy, aka King Suko, better known as EC's resident Isaac Hayes in the building, bro. What's good, man? Man, what it do, baby? You what already do, know. Baby. What it do, what it do, what it do, ladies and gentlemen, GOW, what is good? Dallas. Acknowledge us. Yes. Here, baby. Yes, here. yes. And for those who don't know, man, we are here tonight uh to cover Impact Wrestling's Hard to Kill pay-per-view, in which, man, we got a hell of a lineup tonight. Uh, as it's been announced yesterday on WWE SmackDown, current Impact Knockouts champion Mickey James will be an entry in the Women's Royal Rumble. She will also be facing Deanna Perrazzo tonight at Impact Wrestling's Hard to Kill, man, the Texas yeah. Death Match. And then, of course, we got Impact, uh, former Impact tag team champion former world champion uh ring of honor legend himself chris saber he's going one-on-one with jonathan gresham for the first ever uh roh title defense and impact wrestling two codes tonight we also got uh the Man. women's x division match i actually can't wait for that yeah, I can't wait for that. I yeah, yeah. That yeah. I guess who went that time, man. I guess who went that time. You know, our good friend Jordan Grace is in there. That, that big mommy pump. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah baby, you know. Then we got, I believe, Rosemary. I believe we got Tasha Steeles as well. Uh, I believe we got Chelsea Green, if I'm not mistaken. So I mean, we got we we got quite a few people, man. But Suko, man, let's talk about. You know what's been going on this weekend wrestling. Of course, yesterday you had Friday Night SmackDown, as I alluded to earlier. Yeah, you also yeah. had AEW uh, Rampage. That happened. Man, so you know, let, 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 <laughs> let's, let's talk about some key moments of the show last night, man. Uh, well, the key moment of SmackDown last night was that Roman Reigns, of course, came back uh, to SmackDown. You know, he acknowledged. He said, "You know, uh, once again, I leave for a week, and everything just seems to everything <laughs> just seems to go to shit." Right. And, and, but it did it. I mean. He got to keep his championship. He didn't have to fight Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar got a championship. Mm, it seems pretty, seems pretty more than more than lucky enough for him. The fact that is, you know, that second time around, especially after letting go of Paul Heyman, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a little bit, you know, week before. Yeah, man. Um, uh, it was cool. It was a nice little start. Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar talking work is 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 something that. Fans like myself who who saw Brock on his first run, mm-hmm. it's something we've always kind of liked about him. Um, you know, it's always that something that we always wanted to uh, see more of, especially when he had his interactions with Kurt right, and, yeah. and quite a few other people. Yeah. You know, it was Eddie. like, Eddie, uh, yeah. right, man. It was like good or bad. He had interactions with people who was just like, dude, you're a douche, but man, you've got something in you. Right, right, right. And seeing Brock come back out and basically just <laughs> – <laughs> Where were they at yesterday? Where was uh, I forgot where they were at yesterday. But uh, he looked out to the crowd. He did it Monday, and he did it again. He's like, acknowledge me. And he, <laughs> laughed, he laughed at Roman Reigns' face. And I'm like, man, that was just such great. Like, whatever the long, you could tell this is such long-term booking right? Uh, for this is, is really good. But, uh, you know, the highlight, you know, of course, back and forth, he issued a challenge that a lot of people thought after after what we saw from the Royal Rumble, uh, not, not Royal Rumble, uh, <laughs> Day one was that once he um, once he won the WWE Championship that they were going to do a title for title, right? And that the fact that, that you know he he basically challenged Roman Reigns. He basically said, "Yo, man, I got a title. You got a title. Champion for champion, champ title for title." But he didn't say where. So that that that's the that's the caveat. I think we all kind of know where that's going to end up going. Uh, now the question is, well, we know Bobby's going to face Brock at uh, Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. Well, who are we going to get to face Roman Reigns? Problem was, there is nobody. Yeah. There is nobody. So, summing up shortly, <laughs> they had to go get to Friday Night some Messiah. <laughs> <laughs> and even it's like... And Roman Reigns was so arrogant, like they, like Adam Pierce, like went to him and was like, "Yo, like, are you okay with whoever I bring in?" And he's like, "Dude, I didn't, I didn't ran through everybody. It doesn't matter." Like, he said, "Okay," and he went and got the one guy that's been asking for the title shot against Roman yeah. while he's been the tribal chief, and <clears throat> somehow, some way, he's either found some way around it or just not gotten it due to Edge, Bam Bryan, and then right, right. what's going on. But uh, 
if if they brought back, which let's be honest, we all we all ask that question. Like you got Drew, but not knowing Drew was having the injury that he was having. Yeah. Uh, so therefore he's not going to be around for a minute. So it's like, all right, well, we all kind of thought Drew versus Roman, that's going to be a setup. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, um, yeah, man, we, we got the Monday night Messiah after like the 20 to 250th, uh, new day versus, uh, Uso's, uh, tag team match, right, which right, right. I, again, I was kind of, I ain't gonna lie. I thought, you know what? Okay. The Uso's won at the pay-per-view new day went in here. I, right, I can't right. see it. The fact that they lost again, it's like, yeah. okay. Y'all lost back to back title matches. You now have no reason to continue fighting for these championships. Mm -hmm. I, as, as, even though, as much as I love watching you two teams fight, if y'all don't go get another goddamn tag team, you got the Viking Raiders, you got Garza and Carrillo. Yeah, I understand that <laughs> some like the one team is a former Raw tag team, the other team hasn't right. really done much. Right. But there's so much more you can do, but just the basis of what happened. And Sami Zayn after signing that new contract lost yeah. went back to losing to Rick Boogs. So you know it's like dude, you 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 got uh you 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 got something new exciting to look forward to, but at the same time, man, you got the same BS. And if the issue was you don't have anyone to push to fight Roman Reigns, man, you. you Last night's show was the biggest example of not acknowledging it, but then realizing it too late. Mm -hmm. That damn, we haven't pushed anybody, we haven't made anybody look legit. So once again, we got to go take a guy from one show and put him on the other show because one, we mass fired so many people, yeah. but also two, because we have no faith yeah. in none of these other guys. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, that, that's SmackDown in the short for me, but. You know, other than that, it was a it was a decent show. It was just yeah, the the oh the Matt and oh god. Uh, you know, I'm not even gonna mention the the happy talk. <laughs> we're, we're just gonna skip past happy talk. <clears throat> that, that was well, well, I mean, it, it's it's funny you said that because you know Roman he said it. Um, it's it's visibly obvious that there is nobody aside from right now. You got Brock. Right. Where he said uh, Drew, but he's dealing with what he's going through. Right. Right. Um, I mean, right. he, Corbin, if you were to make him serious and not this happy Corbin shit, but that's not in the plans right now. Nope. I mean, my, my thing never, is, never my, my, my thing is, you are absolutely correct. But see, that was the issue because we said this about, you know, a half year to, you know, six, nine months ago. We said that Roman, he been ran through the roster. That's the crazy part. You know, yeah. like he's been run through the roster. And at some point, you have to make somebody look like a credible threat but you got to have more than one person because like like we all thought you know aside from brock and drew but then you have a situation where roman called COVID, right and then brock had to go chase for another title so now it's like you didn't have nobody if you wanted to because now drew's hurt so now you don't have your your, your guaranteed backup is yeah. now hurt but honestly i look honestly i feel like they could have did drew they could have gave drew the opportunity to end up in a triple threat with Brock and Roman. Mm -hmm. Like that would have been your story there because where's the, what's the wrinkle? The wrinkle of that is, is that one, Drew went through what he went through to beat Brock Lesnar. Right. right. And so that has that history there. But then for Drew to be wanting to get at Roman Reigns and to make sure that, you know, he's one of the guys to let Roman Reigns know, no, you're not the top guy. I'm one of those top guys. There's a story there. And so to have... I ain't gonna lie to have Brock, Drew, and and Roman as your triple threat of the of the of the Universal Championship on SmackDown. Yeah. That would have actually been a very smart thing to do. Yeah. Of course, we're asking you to do that, but then somehow, some way, give a damn about other people so they can actually look like legit champions. Like when you really think about this year's Royal Rumble, dude. Yeah. Without saying a former champion, WWE champion's name, is mm -hmm. there any one person on this roster that you can think of that has a, le shot, a legit shot? It don't even matter if Big E was still the WWE champion. Right. Is there anyone you see as a legit shot being now Brock or Roman Reigns that has not already won a championship? Not Bobby Lashley, not Drew, not Ro not Seth, not, right, not, right. not Kevin Owens. I'm t t taking all of them. That's one and done something, take them all away. <clears throat> What's in this new group? 
I'm, 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 I'm thinking. I'm on. But before I, I, I get, get, cause my, cause my, cause my, cause, cause my initial response is no. But if I, if, if I want to think of even somebody who's been underutilized, oh well, no, because Finn, he's a former champion. Uh, and he, no, no. Next to line for what, Earl? No. That's why I want to, you got to tell me that one, Earl. Next to line for what? Because he's already, he's already been given a, he beat the Undertaker at Roman Reigns. He already got the uh, the acknowledgement of that. Okay, so so here here here's my I'm not gonna say issue, but here's an issue. I feel like WWE has kind of dug themselves into with Roman Reigns for what six seven years. You tried right mm-hmm. forcing Roman, and this and, and but this goes back to when you had John Cena still on the roster. Right. This goes back to when you were flip flopping Big Show. This goes back to when you didn't know what the hell you wanted to do with Braun Strowman because you know for like two weeks you want to make him look like a badass against Brock, and then you make him look like a fucking <laughs> chump, and then he's a badass, yeah. then a chump. <laughs> then this also yeah. goes back to Corbin again because Corbin he had a run for a minute, and then him and John Cena kind of had their angle, and then you know mm-hmm. that kind of went a little funny. So. WWE was so Vince was so gung ho on fans getting behind Roman, behind Roman being a new company guy because Mr. You Can't See Me was leaving, and they wanted that new Hulk Hogan so bad. Which, by the way, as great as Roman is, he's not that. He's not that. He's and not Triple that. H once said it best: there will never be another guy, or or at least in the immediate right now, like a like a John Cena, mm-hmm. like a Hulk. Like a Stone Cold, you know, Roman, he's great, he's good, he's impressive, but even still, you know, is he the needle mover? Mm-hmm. Sure, by today's standards, absolutely, right? Right, but you know, when you look at guys like Rock Hogan, Austin, when you look at what a guy like Hogan did by joining WCW and NWO for that different just wrestling just, as a whole, just when joining you, and being a heel, yeah, that, that, that was yeah. the whole thing, just being this awesome dude that that was the forever do the right thing, say your prayers, take your vitamins all of yeah. a sudden. <laughs> but, 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 but look what that did for the whole entire landscape, right? Then you took oh, yeah. Steve Austin, once known as the freaking Rainmaster, right? And then you turn him, you know, Austin 316, something simple as that. You see what that did for wrestling. You yeah. know, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels is Shawn Michaels. But then when him and Triple H and China, they teamed up DX, well, that was well, that attitude. So that that's all it was. It was just a simple that which and attitude here. But, but, you, but, you, but, you, but, but, but but you gotta look at what those performers individually collected did for wrestling as a whole. Right. Now Roman, yes, he's he to me, he is the most entertaining part of WWE right now on a consistent basis. I would mm-hmm. even say in wrestling as a whole, Roman to me is one of the most consistent people because honestly, as he's become a tribal chief, I don't really think he's missed. You know, when he comes out to cut a promo, it's I mean, of course, some weeks are better than others, but I don't mind seeing Roman begin and middle end of a show. You know, sometimes it gets to a point when I don't see Roman, I'm like, damn, where Roman at? You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. You you don't feel that way about everybody. But do you think Roman has that has had that impact on the business the way or could potentially have an impact on the business the way those guys that we just named and women as well have had in the past on the business or do you think it's one of those situations where he truly won't be appreciated until he becomes in a role like a Brock Lesnar where he's gone for a while and it comes back a few years later and starts doing these you know these various matches you know to me I feel like Brock somebody said this too I believe it's uh Bully Ray Bubba Ray he said that Brock Lesnar doesn't get that same respect in the light of a Stone Cold or a Rock or Hogan, but when you look at it, Brock, he's up there. He's up there. The problem is he's a way too long. But I get it. See, you see, Brock Lesnar brought that MMA UFC yeah. style to the WWE, so that's how they treat him. That's why you don't see him before. Special attraction. So it's a special attraction. So yeah. it's like even though you're tired of seeing him not show up, which make which is bad because then you don't get enough people challenging for him. So it's like it's it's been a it's been a blessing and a curse that um he said truthfully the forgotten superstar is Orton. It is, but he's on Raw. And actually he's not forgotten. He he hasn't been forgotten because what he's been doing with Riddle is gonna be great. And when 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 him and Riddle decide to go one on one, yeah, that's gonna be a really good match. Uh but him taking on that's what that that that's a difference between Randy Orton. 
Randy Orton has never been looked at like John Cena. Randy Orton has never, and neither is Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is, he's the guy now because that's what, uh, that's what Vince is pushing. Right. Okay, that's what Vince has been pushing for the last few years. Why has it worked? It's worked because one, you've taken the, you, you you've taken the 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 the, the shock collar mm-hmm. off of Roman Reigns. Yeah. So you letting him say a little bit. He's arrogant. He's become cocky. That's good because it's a character change. One, it's a, it's, a, it's a complete one eighty from what he was. Yeah. Just a couple of years ago, like the way he talked, the way he handled things, the way he like people got so tired of that. That now it's like, man, yo, he kind of talking, he talking outside his neck. Right, right, talking, and talking yo, crazy. Yeah. He talking real crazy. All yeah. right, cool. So it, it it worked. Now the problem is you didn't let no one else do that. Mm-hmm. Or, it, it, it almost feel like he's in a league of his own, right? Well, he's in a league of his own because he's the only thing that Vince trusts. Again, it's the John Cena effect over and again. Instead of giving guys opportunity to see where they could go. And like I said before, man, we all know that it's sometimes very on certain wrestlers and what's going on in their personal lives, and we get that. Right. But if you got a guy with a character, he may not be the greatest talker, get him a manager. I mean, damn, you have no problem with getting someone else a manager that they can't talk, but yet the people that you should get a manager, you don't get a manager for. So yeah. it's a blessing and a curse for Brock, for Roman Reigns because he's not on their level. He's not on their level because no one's put him on that level. Vince is trying to put him on this level. Yes, we acknowledge some of the stuff he's done, but let me let me the let me. way it's the way I think it's just the way that it happened. Too many losses where you continue to get, you know, opportunity after opportunity. And that's where it feels kind of John Cena ish. To me, that's where I think it feels kind of John Cena ish. I want to ask you a question, but I want, I want us to acknowledge Earl's question first. When is KO gonna get his flowers? Because you know, time so. And, and, Don't and, expect. And and, 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 and 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 you know what, Earl? I'm, I'm gonna get to you about KO. I want to kind of finish this up real quick. We all talk about KO. So as far as I, I'm gonna talk to you about Roman because you said something. You said nobody's put him in that in that light or in that category. Hmm. Is it the LeBron James effect, right? Where you we've gotten so spoiled. With seeing, because even when Roman, see, the problem was people. I don't think never necessarily didn't like Roman as a wrestler. I think people always like Roman to a degree as a wrestler. It was just the character they didn't like. But you knew from the jump that they were grooming him, even when he first became part of the Shield. But I believe that first Survivor Series, we had all those eliminations, and they, you know they always, even when Seth was the man, even when Dean was the man, Roman was always that guy. You knew they were grooming to be something special. So do you do, do you think right now <clears throat> people they're they're because they're in the moment they don't appreciate it now right it's like seeing LeBron play you you assume he's gonna play forever but you know he's over that other side of the hill right, right, right. and then when he retires he's gonna be like, damn bro like shit we ain't got LeBron anymore he was truly a special guy to watch and but that that's how I think people are gonna feel about Roman I think even now I think. The people the, who don't like Roman or the character of Roman, I think once he's actually gone right. and you don't see him anymore, and you kind of see the business, John Cena, perfect example. When you see the business kind of evolve without him, it's kind of like, damn, you know what? He want, he want that bad, man. Well, yes and no. Uh, for Roman, not so much as good for it was for John Cena. At least when John Cena left, you had capable people. Roman Reigns there's no capable people. We've watched all the capable people yeah. get let go. So, yeah. and, and that and that's the thing. Yeah. It's like, even if you want to say, well, John buried half of those same people. He did, but at least you you knew how good they were. And the thing was, with Roman Reigns, people weren't hyped about him. They were hyped about Seth. They were hyped about Dean. Yeah. Those were the two guys. But look how they pushed Dean to the side to where, like, they gave Dean the United States Intercontinental Tag Teams. WWE Championship, Seth got all of that. They all got all of it as a group because as a group, they were just that dominant. And as individuals, they can be dominating. But it was Seth Rollins. It was Dean Ambrose was the first solo champion. Seth had to team with Roman because Roman wasn't there. As far as in-ring, Roman was not there. But Seth and Dean were there, at least good enough to go out there and put on a good match. And that's why that worked out. Now, Dean... 
leaving, going to AEW, I, I think that still resonates with people because, uh, well, it will, you know, it's the fact that one, you knew you had a guy that can go in the ring with anybody. He's just as good as Seth, if not better. Yeah. But yet Seth got pushed. Roman is getting over pushed. And that's always going to be the downfall for Roman Reigns. It's going to be about that over. Uh, now, so now they got it. They, they kind of got to because they don't really have much of a choice. Uh, the, Roman was never that guy. He was never looked at as a dude of like, oh my God, he's going to be the he's going to be the next big star. That's Vince being on his little fetish of just dudes there looking a certain yeah. way. And Roman Samoan. I'm pretty sure the history, family history, and all that plays a it plays a part in Roman's favor, but it, it, it's a negative effect because it's like you have to watch him get such a push when you know he's nowhere as good as a lot of other people were at that time. But that's a different story. Uh, same story, but it's a different type of time yeah, to talk yeah. about. Um, with Roman now, yes, he, he, can, he can be impactful because he is impactful, but he's only impactful because there's no one else as impactful as him. You got to bring yeah. back Goldberg for this. You got yeah. to bring back Brock for that. When you have Cesaro, which people are still looking for Cesaro to continue that story, and you totally dropped it. Kevin Owens lost four straight times to. to yeah. So it's like you you had people, and you did, and they looked it good for the moment, but nothing came of it. What did Cesaro do? Cesaro went back to just basically losing. Like there, there was there was no follow up to push new people. And now with the firing of all of the old black and gold NXT uh, members, up. you know now you starting to see that Regal that one that one hurt. I'm not surprised. I, it it might have hurt you. I was not surprised. Actually, I'm more surprised he has been still there this long. They didn't fire him sooner. Really? And I think it's just out of respect. Dude, once Vince took over, them first three weeks, you didn't see Regal. You didn't see Regal not one. You, know you didn't crazy? see the general manager not one time since that the 2.0 started. That is very true. Once I noticed that, I'm like, damn, Regal does it. That's it's true. only a matter of time before he get fired. Yeah. I'm just surprised he lasted this long, but that might have been out of respect. So to see all of the, 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 the Triple H guys, starting to leave yeah. you you start to see that that new guard is really coming in so mm-hmm. now it's like well look at the main roster who's the old guard now the cesaros the Shinsuke's. uh even though kevin owens is a more popular person and he just resigned but sammy Zayn resigned he's more popular but he's still he's still just a jobber why like, he's just a jobber sammy's better than that we Which know is crazy. Sammy's like, better than sammy that. What, 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 that's the problem and, and and that's the thing, you know, like, okay, Dolph Ziggler, I get it, right? But even Dolph had his moment nah, in the Dolph sun. was the biggest mystery of all. Like, I understood Dolph had a couple of injury problems, but, dude, how many other people had injury problems but can still work the way he does in the ring and still be over with the people? But, but look, John Cena got injured constantly, dude. But here, but here, but here, and I know it's apples to oranges. But no, but here's the crazy part with Dolph. Dolph is the only guy that can lose 99 matches in a row and you throw him in the title match and you still believe he has somewhat of a chance. Yeah. You know, and that's a testament to Dolph, uh, to Dolph. And if you ask anybody who's wrestled Dolph, they'll tell you the same thing. Like, yeah. Dolph is one of those guys that loses, but as fans, we know the only reason you're losing is because you're here to make this person look good, not because you just suck or because you don't have... Because Dolph, he's been world champ, right? Dolph's been intercontinental champ. I believe Dolph, yeah, he has been tag team champ multiple times. So Dolph is, he has a championship pedigree, and even in his losing ways, he still is, you know, he still has a, a Hall of Fame worthy career. But with a guy like Sami Zayn, I think the thing that's kind of pissing me off with Sami Zayn, see, Dolph, we've always known Dolph as a guy in WWE, even from his time in the Spirit Squad, right? right. But with Sami Zayn, for, for those hardcore fans, you knew Sammy before NXT, but when he got to NXT, it was like to see the matches he had in NXT, especially with Kevin Owens, and then to see how they completely diminished him on the main roster. I think that's where I kind of feel like, okay, not everybody's meant to be in that Dolph Ziggler role, because to me, I feel like you've done more, more harm than good with the goodwill of the fans and Sami Zayn. Like, yeah, I'm always watching Sami Zayn match, but it's kind of like, dude, I, I I don't really 
care for it as much because you know I thought they really had something good going when they had the whole conspiracy gimmick, right? When he, when he was doing that for 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 a little bit because I thought it was going somewhere, but just like everything that starts to go somewhere, they end up fucking it up or they end up canceling or you just or they just act like it never happened, and that's the issue. Finn Balor, same thing. This guy when he first went to NXT. And he became champ there, and he had a nice run there. We thought when they called him back up to the main roster, all right, cool. Like, all right, I I think this fan, he's good. He's got a chance. <laughs> and not saying that he doesn't, but it's like they they it's like they 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 they, they tease him for a split second, and then it's kind of like, eh, we're gonna kind of just you in because the middle of the there's pole. There's nothing for him. Vince can't. He can't because Vince looks at him like, all right, kid, you showed me something. Then he gets to the main roster. Nah, he ain't got you. Put him back where he was at. And that's why I'm like, man, Finn, why did you sign back? Now, because I also, I understand why some of these guys signed back. They're also at a reach a point in the career where this girl, this is probably the highest paid money they're going to get. Yeah. And it's and it's all thanks to AEW. If AEW wasn't around, I doubt these guys would have gotten the money that they're getting, along, along with the length of time that they're getting. And, and Vince feeling like they're capable because you got rid of so many other people. But, <clears throat> bro, I, you know, I know we Get ready to get off of here in a minute. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, uh kind of wanted to run through Rampage a little bit. We, you know, yeah, w, yeah, we yeah. talk WWE all the time, man. But uh, overall, people, the problem with SmackDown is going to be the cons- the consistent problem of, and well, not just SmackDown, WWE, man. Um, mm-hmm. If WWE wasn't happy with Big E's run, that's your fault. Uh, you as a company, now I. I I don't fault Seth Rollins. I don't fault Kevin Owens. I don't fault Bobby Lashley. They all tried their best to help build that better. That's on you, WWE, because you kept Big E the same. That same happy like I, I know you loved his kid friendly energy and all that, but I felt like he needed to be he needed to he needed to be Big E, but he needed to seem different and separate from the new day. And Big E still does not feel that way. It's still the same Big E yeah. from the new day. So it doesn't feel like a separation. And I think that's the that's the thing for me. So you drop the ball there. You don't push newer talent. And then you're trying to push the talent that's the most greenest. Because you just want to press the next young hot thing, which is a which is not great yeah. within itself, but you know, it it, 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 it is what it is. Um and we won't see and as far as this Royal Rumble, we know there are some guys that are good, but are is there anyone before we get to this uh, rampage, you know, review real quick about what happened? Is there anybody, anybody? And I, I know we kind of actually this earlier, but we kind of went back and forth on it. Is there anybody on this roster, Raw SmackDown, that you see being a legit champion right now that hasn't been champion? No. Somebody who I think, if you're giving, if you're giving some time, mm-hmm. I believe Rich Holland could be that guy. I believe he mm-hmm. could. I, I, I believe. I, I, but right now, no. As a stance, no. But if, if if I had to look at just the way WWE builds their stars right. and how the, the type of guys, the stereotypical guys that Vince goes for, mm-hmm. Rich that guy, right? Rich got the build. He's got the look. He's pretty solid in the ring. Uh, could do a little better on the mic. I mean, the gimmick is a little bland, but I feel like if you if, if you do some minor tweaks and some minor adjustments and give him meaningful storylines, meaningful opponents, like come on, man, like 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 a like a, a experienced Ridge Holland in the ring with a guy like a Roman, like a Brock. Hell, give me Sheamus, give me Drew, give me Finn. You know, give me somebody that this guy, give me Dog. Give me somebody that this guy could work with, have a meaningful storyline with a meaningful payoff. I can see it eventually, but as the roster stands right now, but, as far as people that haven't been champ already, I don't see anybody believable. And unfortunately, that's the problem. I don't think there's nobody worthy of taking the title off of Roman or Brock right now. No, unless not that haven't been champ already. And haven't already been in the company for 10 years. Uh yeah, all right. So, ladies and gentlemen, we had Rampage last night. I know we kind of spent this whole time on uh, SmackDown, but, you know, when you're talking WWE, you, you get more questions than you do answers. Uh, <laughs> facts, facts. Uh, so, we had Adam Cole versus Jake Atlas, which was not a bad match. Um, definitely, 
definitely showed off the skill set of Jake Atlas. You know, yeah, what he, what I miss he was, him. What he was able to do in NXT. Yeah. Uh, definitely a talent. You can't understand why. I don't think he's that old, but even if he is, the dude moves great in the ring. Um, super, super smooth. I thought he had a great match. You know, I thought it was a great one-on-one with Adam Cole. Uh, Cole got the victory, of course. Uh, and then after that, you know, Orange Cassidy and the uh, you know, and you know, uh, Cole jumps on the mic. You know, he's talking trash. Or Cassidy, he's not done, which he, he shouldn't be. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they got some, you know, some, some more fighting to do between them and the best friends and the Arrow boys. Right. So, you know, you're going to have that. And then, uh, so then we get um, that Cody was out for tonight's Battle of the Belts. Um, and that Dusty Rhodes. Now, this is where Dan Lambert and them promo makes sense. Because uh, they got a promo earlier, basically being upset that no one else was given this opportunity, but it was given to Dusty to fight. Like, well, how you doing, Mama? Hope you're feeling better. Um, the fact that you had you had Cody win to set up a rematch with Sammy. Mm-hmm. Cody's out. Why not let someone newer? Because mm-hmm. see, now here's my thing. Dustin Rose better not be Sammy Guevara. I don't care what the script was. Uh, Dusty you, Rose better not be Sammy Guevara. But, 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 Dustin, but, but, Dustin, but, hold on, no, hold on, no, look, look, no, look, look, no, no, I'm gonna no, tell you what. No, no, people, want, no, no. Look, you you want Cody to be heel? You want be you want Cody to be heel so goddamn bad? You want Cody to turn so bad? He's have, not have, gonna do it. But this this may be this one of those things where I think it may backfire, like where it's not even enjoyable to for people to watch. It's like, bro. Like you're really starting. They, they're going to start looking at him now, truly as that Triple H. as that Triple H judge. Which, in a way, that kind of works. But I think that's what people want different. I, I, I think yeah. people want something different from that. They don't want that. Not to say that he can't do it or pull it off, which it would help it. But I don't think if they want to see him turn heel, then do it for the bigger title. Find a way mm-hmm. to get into the bigger picture. Don't bury one of the, one of the, your four pillars who's had one of the least title defenses and pretty much because Darby Allen was wrecking through dudes. Yeah. Uh, Miro was going through people like Sammy's beating guys, but it hasn't been like, wow, Sammy's fighting this dude. It was like, oh, Sammy fought Jay Lethal. And then we ain't seen much from Jay Lethal then. Right, right. But then we really weren't getting that much great from Sammy either. Or we was getting too many over baby face promos. I kind of wanted more of an inner circle kind of Sammy. To be a good guy, but kind of be you know, a little bit anti. But right. I, I just feel Dustin beating Sammy is not going to go well, and I and I don't think that's good for business or bad for business. It, it could work as far as pushing help Cody over, but uh, you keep letting Dan Lever say what he's been saying is, and, and it's really going to get. I, I don't know. I, I, if I, there's an end game, there's an end game. I I, I think the thing is. It all depends on what's the long term. I'm not really worried about Cody. I think what's the long term plan for Sammy, right? If you plan on Sammy getting the title back, I don't think he should lose to Dustin. If you don't plan on Sammy getting the title back anytime soon, right. and your 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 story is more so focused on getting Cody over as a unofficial heel, I get it. Mm-hmm. I I think it just kind of depends on what's the plan for Sammy. Right. 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 No, I right, well that 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 does beg the question, but then that's the, if that's the thing, what's the plan for the whole entire inner circle? Uh because yeah, yeah, yeah. they're, they're as a group, they have not been together very much. Yeah. Even though you've got Jericho coming out to help, you know, Garcia, I mean not Garcia, uh Santana and Ortiz, which mm-hmm. is fine. Hager must be getting ready for a fight. So that's part of why we just don't or okay, so if he just had it, that's why we haven't seen him. So that's cool. Uh what's coming up next with that? But uh so of course, you know, we we um we had that, and then of course we, like I say, they they set that up, and then uh, we have Andrade who seems to have his sights on Darby Allen. Mm-hmm. I'm like, ooh, I, once again, yeah. a match I didn't know I wanted to yeah. see. So thank you, Tony Khan, you're working yeah. there, even though Big Swole says you're an asshole, uh, and she's only saying that because she. <laughs> hey, what's you doing? <laughs> yeah. Big Swole. Swole. Oh, hey, we love you, Swallow. Hey, we, we, love, we appreciate yeah. you, man. And, 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 and we wish it was different. Uh, yeah. We really would wish it was different because you were definitely becoming a fan favorite. Uh, then we got Hook. 
Hook Sam. Going up against Aaron Solo. And uh, not a bad match, man. I mean, like Bronson Reed, uh, Hook actually, uh, there were a few moments, man, where he had to actually take a bit of a beat down. You know, he had to actually take some abuses. You know, yeah. he wasn't looking that over cocky, confident kind of dude, but it was a good match. Uh, I still hate the arm thing over the face because you could just tell it's yeah. just so it's like uh it's not believable yeah, stop yeah. doing that man uh but other than that pretty good match for hook uh hook, that's my dude i ain't gonna lie though the I, I forgot the name of the suplex that he gave qt marshall man but oh it looked it it looked yeah. it beautiful when yeah. he did it i'm yeah. like oh you could tell that is a task trained wrestler right there you can tell he's a properly trained wrestler yeah. that that's how you want to see your trained wrestler he crisp Crispy as hell. Yeah, that, boy, as that, hell. Boy, that boy like a really good bag of lays, he, man. He, he, he's extra, extra crispy. Uh, then, of course, Ricky Starks def- will defend a fake championship that don't matter <laughs> against Matt Seidel, that battle man, of the Mark belts. God, he, yeah, I, forgot about uh, I, I, I would give it more, but it's the FTW championship. It doesn't mean anything. And Tony Khan and them aren't acknowledging it. That's why you ain't seen no one off from Taz not holding it. Uh, then of course we got the tag team match: Britt Baker versus Jamie Hayter. I mean, Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter versus Ruho, Ruho and Soho. Uh, Ru, Rio and Soho. Um, uh, it was okay. It was cool. It's just setting up their match for tomorrow night: Rio and Britt Baker. Uh, Rio and Soho ended up getting victory. Uh, then of course what we got? Uh, of course then we got the like I said, we got the Dan Lambert uh promo, which. You know what, man? I'm not gonna lie. Like this is one of those promos where it's like, all right, you know what? He's actually speaking truth. Oh yeah. Like you could have picked anyone else, but you're gonna pick the brother of Cody. Like it's like it it, it goes with the storyline of what they've been doing. But and, and and that is like you you appreciate that booking. I know we're fans. We're nitpicking. Well, you know, fans been nitpicking for years. Why you think DC movies suck? Uh, <laughs> it it's it's. It's valid on both points as far as why they chose Dustin, even though I still don't want him to beat Sammy. But it also makes it valid for 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 Lambert and what he's been saying. And the fact that once again, and now it's like, okay, what are you doing with the man of the year? Right. Why aren't we seeing more of them? And then I start to ask questions of like uh like a uh, 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 big swole, you know, it's like, damn, like, is you going to give anybody? And it's not to say that you're not giving other people the opportunity, but it's like, man, where There's is a that? There's hey, a where is that? Like, man, it's looking real WWE-ish. It's like. But you, but you know, you can't even say that because you, you got to think about it. I believe, what, seven, uh, let me see, because you, you had Lashley, Big E, Kofi, and right? Rock. Uh, Rock, but he on on the women's side, Bianca, Sasha. I like, mean, yeah, lately, I, late for the last year and a half. Yeah, for the last, last year and a half. But last year and a half don't make up for what's been so consistent for so long to where it's one of those things where you you notice it. it it's to the point where you notice it, but no one wants to ever talk about it. That mm-hmm. that that's where it's at. So yeah. you're you're not wrong in what you're getting ready to say. I'm sorry, Amy, you could no, 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 yeah, yeah. You're not wrong in it, but yet it's still. Like we know with Scorpio Sky, we know how good he is. Mm-hmm. Why don't we see more of him? I just think like, that's the thing. It's like don't don't keep telling us, well he's doing this, he's doing this, he's doing this, but we're not seeing him do shit. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's with WWE, I believe because they had a system right for so long. It was one of the like you say, it was kind of almost ingrained even uh, unintentionally yeah and true. then you know, and, and, and then you know as society evolved as as all things do they they've evolved and they've become more inclusive mm-hmm. um i think the reason maybe aew um they're kind of getting really under the microscope right now is because you're a brand new company you be, you've built your your name and your reputation on being different than those guys, right? But you're kind of so, like those guys. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so well, we knew that was gonna happen. Yes. Yeah, so, so when you bring in those guys from that company, which of course is gonna happen, of course. But then when you know you talk about diversity and inclusion and all this other stuff, and you're you're basically your new guard is basically resembling the old guard from you know from Connecticut. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, all right, dude, like. Yeah, we gave them a pass, and now it's like we're starting to acknowledge it. But now you guys, you talking all that shit, and you're doing the exact same thing. 
And then I think also the thing is with TK, the the thing about him is I love Tony Khan because he stands behind his product. He stands behind his talent. The only problem is he gets a little too defensive, right? Uh, with Vince, you can talk as much shit as you want about WWE. You would never see Vince tweet. I think with Tony Khan, it's if you say anything that isn't good, if you say something that's mildly critical of AEW, he gets super, super defensive. And I think that's sort of where you kind of lose a little bit of credibility with those mainstream fans or those potential, they, you know, casual fans because they're looking at it like, what's up, dude? You know, and when he you know, said we said about Big Swole, I think that was kind of really a stain. So I, I miss what he said about Miss Swole. So 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 basically, long story short, it was he said that the reason he let Swole's contract expire or something to that effect was that simply her in ring talent wasn't up to standard, wasn't up to par, right? That's that's what he said. So Big Swole, you know, and she and wow. she and she even said herself, you know. I'm, I'm bringing up the issue of diversity. I'm not saying necessarily more black people, or more brown people in general. She was just saying, you know, basically, it just, it, even the women division as a whole, she was like, yo, like we've only got like one woman's match, maybe if that, and then half the women matches are on dark, but you got 30 matches and they're like 20 seconds a piece. Yeah. Nobody's happy. So yeah. I, when she was talking about diversity and stuff like that, she was like, I'm not even talking about just specifically black or brown, even the Asian wrestlers, stuff like that. But I think she was just speaking in general because you see the same people week after week. And even when you mix it up, it's, it's mixed up, it's but it's still here. like a familiarity to it. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And then I think what kind of hurt was because I think we all knew from the jump that Jay Cargill seemed like the obvious choice ever since they announced the TBS title. Mm-hmm. But then Swole said what she said. So now the Jay Cargill won the title. Now people are trying to make it seem like, oh, well, you know, this is just Tony Khan's response or what you call it. Which, but but th- th- that was already foreshadowed. Yeah. And and we we all have been saying that. Look, you got two black guys telling you. We Ben said once they coming out with a TBS championship. I said, oh, Jay Cargill's got to win because that's that bitch's show. That bitch is ch- yeah. TBS. Yeah. That's her it, it championship. I had that, that made perfect sense. Oh, no, by the way, have you seen Jack Cargill, bro? Have you, have you seen her? Uh, I mean, I've always of seen her. Of course, she's gonna be champion. I mean, but yeah, so it was. Well, I now to be fair, she's green as shit. Green as shit. Green as oh, shit. Green. Yeah. So, so she, 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 but I, the problem I have with her is some of the problems I have with WWE women. Her being so powerful. And then having to dumb, dumb down, down for certain people. It's just I don't like that. And that's why I didn't like Soho going through the tournament like that. Because mm-hmm. I didn't feel like she was. I'm like, man, honestly, I felt like Nyla Rose would have been a better choice for Jay Cargill. In that, I to agree. really show the power skill set and, and just get somebody a little bit more veteran in the ring. I, I'm sorry. I, 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 that you know would have been, the, that been the better match. One person me. I would have taken that's completely different. Or stat liner. Yeah, one person I would have taken that's completely different from all that, who I believe would have put on a good show, mm. Sheeta. Sheeta could She's been. one of the smaller women that I believe, because I've seen Sheeta. We've seen Sheeta do work against Nyla. She's, she's got yeah. an aggressive streak. Like, can she match Jade and Strength? Absolutely not. But she's somebody that I can get behind as, you know, get your ass beat, but come back and give it to Jade. Right? Yeah, for sure. So, but, but yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Because what, what I was going to say, but, and that's cool. She did, but, you know, we have to remember, we don't, they only had five good women that could wrestle. We all said what was the biggest disappointment about AEW's wrestling, women's wrestling, was they didn't have enough people to, uh, that you didn't have enough quality talent. That's why the women's division and the matches weren't getting over on tv because people weren't watching them it's not like and, and you can't you can't fault tony khan so much because impact had half of the good best women and wwe had the other half of the best oh, women. Right, nwa nwa had what was left yeah. ring of honor had what they had and then AEW had to sign who was left and by chance because one company didn't believe in her they were able to luck up on Britt Baker. Yeah. Now, again, I, I, I'm not saying what Swole, Swole said is wrong. We're going to get ready to get out of here. I'm not saying what Swole said is wrong. She had a valid point, and Tony Khan was wrong if that's the way, the way he did that, um, that her in work wasn't that great. Well, um, then why are you keeping certain other women? I'm sorry. 
Uh, I like Pinfellas before. I like uh, the Bunny, but they're not better than Big Swole. Like I, I know they're not. Be- Hell, Layla Hurst is better than they are. Oh, yeah, Layla and, Hurst and, is and, and 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 you got some little. There's there's certain women that are just. I, I, Big Swole wasn't great, but she was she was damn damn sure serviceable, and she could do a lot better than some of these other women. And like I say, the bunny's cool, but I'm I'm not like outside of that street fight they had, that's probably the only match I've ever watched where I was actually interested in with them. It's like I some women I am not interested because they it reminds me of the dealer era of wrestling. And I was like, I you know what? I, I'm tired of seeing y'all get pushed when there's better wrestling women not getting that same fair opportunity. So she had a valid point and uh, just kind of just top this thing off, man. 2.0 and Garcia, they lost to Eddie Kingston and Santana. There's another big dog, Jericho, came out for the save. Uh, that's your rampage. But before we get out of here, it's just, you know, um, I hope Tony Khan, he, he's getting arrogant. He's getting, a, you know, a big head, which. To be fair, he's always been arrogant, just now. It's, it, it, he's it, seen, it, but he's seen more humble about yeah. things. When moving forward, it's like, yeah, you 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 talk to trash when people say something to you, but you were you did it in a humbling way where it was like, yeah, well, we just gonna do this and we just gonna do that and we just gonna do this and do that and and you'll see. And and I've always been okay with the we'll see and and given the opportunity, but we also said that one of the biggest reasons why people don't want to watch AW is because they don't have people that folks recognize. Yeah, the casual fan. Yeah. You're trying to get the casual fan or the fans who stopped watching wrestling years ago yeah. because they hated what has been sports. So you, you're trying to get those fans back and you got to get some recognition of people. The thing is, I told you this earlier. I said or, or last week or week before, they need a fit Finley. They need a somebody yeah. to handle that women's division. Mm-hmm. The only reason I say fit Finley is because we it, look it just, at what he's done. It just look yeah. what he did for the yeah. women's division yeah. in WWE. And honestly, if you can go get a, a, a Ivory or a Molly Holly or somebody that want to train, Holly, that that's trainer, willing to really bro, train yeah. these women, you go yeah. get go get a Jazz. All you know, she go get a leader. Go get a go get. Well, leader's not. I, I think leader's not leaving WWE right right now. I, I, only leader's not on the back. Leader's not on the Mickey James outs of WWE. Yeah. So she's she's a Hall of Famer. She's loved. She can come back. Mickey James is expendable. That's why you see the Impact Champion. Women's champion coming back for the Royal Rumble because they don't have enough legit women. <laughs> uh, but I, it, 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 there needs to be a, a better balance, and and I hope Tony uh, sees that and understand that. But he 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 does need to he does need to stick more to the originals. I'm I'm glad. Oh, uh, and I'm I'm glad to see that uh, Ray Phoenix arm because I know we didn't do a review. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm glad that yeah. that was a hell of a spot. It's the way he came down. I didn't even see how his arm would have went back that far until I watched it again. I'm like, damn, man. like how did like he flanged his arm so much that it twisted and by the time it, it it just caught up and you oh that was so horrible to watch. But uh it was it it in saying that it was awesome to see Jurassic Express be yeah. crowned the new tag team champions. So other than that, ladies and gentlemen, we gotta get out of here. We got we got some stuff to go do. Yeah, we yeah, to yeah. Ready. That's all. We gotta get ready for Impact Hard to Kill tonight. We cover that thing as media. Y'all gonna see us in a minute. We are gonna have our, you know, what I'm saying our our GOW official, you know, media merch popping a two code man. Like I said, we got Chris Saban. We got uh, let's see who else we got. Mm-hmm. We got we got Gresham. We got Mickey James. Yeah, we got Joy team, Grace. Man. We got the tag team match. Man, we got a lot going and on. The women's ultimate. Yeah, the, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Now we got the women's ultimate X match. I said the women's exhibition match. Oh my god. We got now we got the women's ultimate X match, but then we got the Texas Death match. We got the Texas Death match. Yo, but with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, Dallas acknowledges as you are truly man, a 28-year-old piece of gold. He is too cold. And we'll see y'all later on tonight, man. Because you know we're gonna talk that talk with you. But until then, man, peace.